in this problem we have a block of aluminum. We're given the mass of the aluminum is 0 0.025 kilograms and the density of the aluminum is 2700 kilograms per meter cube. We want to figure out what the volume of the aluminum is. Now we have a simple volume, density, and mass equation. Part A, density is mass divided by volume. Now if you look at this in units, density is kilograms per meter cubed. Mass is just kilograms and volume is just meters cubed. So straightforward, and so we're going to substitute or solve this. So volume of aluminum equals mass of aluminum divided by density of aluminum. I'm plugging my values for mass is 0 0.025 kilograms. My volume is 2,700 kilograms per cubic meter. These kilograms cancel. We get meters cubed to the top. So our volume of aluminum turns out to be 9.259 times 10 to the minus 6 cubic meters. Now, two significant digits now, because that's what we have. Final volume is 9.3 to the minus 6 cubic meters. So that's the volume of our aluminum that we have. The second part of the question asks us if this is underwater and supported by a string, what is the tension in that string? Now, so if we just put all the forces acting on this cube, we have weight acting down, we have a buoyant force acting upward because this is immersed in water. Now, the buoyancy force is always equal to the weight of the fluid displaced. And lastly, we're going to have a tension acting upward in that string. Now, if this wasn't, if this wasn't in water, it would just be, uh, the tension would be equal to the weight, equal in opposing forces. But since we have a buoyancy force, it takes, uh, the string takes up less force in order to hold it up. So, uh, since we know that the buoyancy force is equal to the weight of the fluid displaced, and now we know the volume, of that, we can say the volume of this aluminum, this, is going to be the volume of the fluid displaced. So we're going to use that to figure out exactly how much the weight of the fluid is, and that will give us our buoyancy force. So buoyancy force, so this is part B, equal to weight of the fluid displaced. Now we can tell right away, this is water that we've got displaced, that we're displacing. Water, rule of water, 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter. Okay, so the weight of our fluid is going to be W is mg, so the mass of uh, the mass of the the water displaced times g. So w equals mg. So that's all we have to figure out now is the mass of the water displaced. Now the mass, we're going to use this formula again to figure out our mass. We know rho, we know v for water, we can figure out m. So m for water, if we've solved this, is rho for water, V of water, so the, the volume of water displaced and the volume of water displaced is equal to the volume of aluminum that we have. So we're going to plug these in. 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter, their density, times by the volume of water we have, which is 9.259 times 10 to the minus 6 cubic meters. And notice that I used uh, I kept my all the digits in there, and I didn't use the 9.3. You always want to do that in intermediate calculations. Leave out it, all the decimal places you can. So I multiply those two together. 9.259 times 10 to the minus 3. Now kilograms. 
that's the mass of water that gets moved. Meters cubed is canceled, leaves us with kilograms. We're going to use this in here now. So Fb equals our mass, which is 9.259 10 to the minus 3 kilograms times by g, which is 9.81 meters per second squared. So our buoyancy force now is equal to 0 0.0908 newtons. So all we have to do now is take a sum of these forces, sum of those forces equals 0. We have tension and buoyancy force in the positive and weight in the negative. Tension plus buoyancy force minus weight equals zero. Okay, and we're trying to figure out tension. Tension equals, putting those to the other side, weight minus buoyancy force. Okay, weight we haven't actually figured out yet, but we do know the mass is this times g is 9.8. So we put it this in, we got mg is 0 0.025 kilograms times 9.81 meters per second squared. We have to subtract off our buoyancy force, which we figured out to be 0 0.0908 newtons, minus 0 0.0908 newtons. So if we multiply those two, subtract off 0 0.0908, we get a tension of 0 0.15 newtons.